Hi, and happy Planksgiving. Yes, you heard me right. My 30-day challenge for this November is 30 days of planks. So you're going to do a different plank every single day. Now, if you go to a day and you're unable to do that specific plank, you can always go back to basic forearm plank and hold it as long as you can and see how you're doing and see how you're progressing, or you can pick your favorite plank thus far. There are going to be 30, well, there's 29 different planks in the last day. You go back and you do your basic plank for as long as you can. So I'm going to take you through every single plank. I'm only going to be holding it for a few moments so that you can get an idea of what the planks are. Let's do it. So the idea is you are going to hold them as long as you can. So you might start off with 30 to 60 seconds, and then you can see, you know, how long can I hold this plank? And you can test yourself. You can always do the planks twice during the day or more frequently so you can see Oh, am I getting stronger or can I hold it longer? So our first one is the basic forearm plank. So you're gonna come down on your elbows here and you're gonna hold your plank. Now, I wanna be very specific. You wanna keep your arms apart. Do not put your hands together and pray or anything like that. You wanna keep your hands apart. You're gonna pull up so that your back is flat. We'll turn to the side here. Just wanna make sure you understand what the basic plank is. So you're gonna be here. My arms are apart. Palms up is even better, but if you need to put your palms down, that's fine. Just keep your arms apart so that your shoulders don't um, sink forward and you want to or sink in and you don't roll forward. Abs are in nice and tight. I feel my belly supporting my back. My body is flat. That's your basic plank, okay? So basic forearm plank, day one. So day two, side plank. So you go onto your side just like this and you reach up and look up at that hand. That's proper alignment for a side plank. Now, how do we modify? We put one knee down right here. You can put two knees down here if you need to. And if, it's unable, if you're unable to support yourself because you have a shoulder injury and you cannot support yourself up here in a side plank, then you can go on to the regular basic plank if that's okay. Now, again, you're gonna do both sides. So then you would do it ooh, as long as you can. And then you go to the other side and you would hold your plank. Day three, plank hip dips. So this is in the basic plank position and you roll your hips to the sides. So you just drop your hip to the one side and then lift up to the center and then drop your hip to the other. Now it's really easy to then, you know, sort of get out of form here. So try and keep it low. And the one thing you will notice is that your toes, you'll need to keep tucking them under. They're going to kind of roll. So you're going to tuck the toes under, dropping the hips. And again, my belly's in nice and tight and those are what I call plank hip dips. Um, the plank saw. Again, you're in basic forearm plank. This is day four plank saw. You are in a basic plank and you are making a sawing motion by pushing forward and back. Forward and back right here. Again, make sure that you keep your, you know, your belly in, your body is flat. And anytime you need to modify, you go to your knees. You can still do this on the knees. Okay. Single leg planks. And this is in not necessarily in order of difficulty. There's some that are harder and then you'll get to a day and be like, oh, this is so much easier than day 20 or whatever. Why did you put, it's just random. So single leg planks. You're gonna go here and you're going to lift one leg up and lower it and lift one leg up. Now, if you're doing your plank for a minute, you might say, oh, I'm gonna hold the right leg up for 30 seconds, then the left leg, or you might say, I'm just gonna keep alternating I don't know that I can hold it up that long, you know, that kind of thing. So that's up to you. That's day five, single leg planks. Okay. All right. Plank taps. You're in the forearm plank still, and you're tapping your toe to the side. So you're just opening and tapping toes to the side right here. Okay. That's day six. Dolphin planks. Again, we're in the forearm position and this one, I, you really need to focus on pulling your belly in because you can easily do nothing in this position. So what I want you to do is, so you, what you do is you're here and then you go up here and come flat. Now, what I, so you can easily just lift and lower and use your back and, you know, hurt yourself. You're going to pull your belly in to lift and then you lower flat. So on day seven, when you're doing these dolphin planks, I don't move until I pull my belly in and then I lower back down. I pull my belly in and I pretend that there's like a string on my back pulling me up and then I lower down and that string 
starts when I pull my belly in, lift my back, my body up, and then all the way down. So I'm not lifting from my butt at all. Not at all. I don't, I don't feel it in my butt. I feel it in my abdominals. Spider-Man planks. Spider-Man planks, you're in a forearm plank, and you pull your knees to the elbows. Now, if you need to stay on your knees, which you might, you can easily do that. And you can also come up to a straight arm plank and do it. So if you feel like, okay, I cannot do it in the forearm plank, but I can get up here, a straight arm plank is easier. You have more leverage to do. Um, you can always do that. Okay, that's number eight Spider-Man planks. Day nine, plank rows. So this one, let me just grab a weight. This one, you can use a weight. Pardon me. And if you don't have a weight available, you can do it without the weight. Or if you're unable to do this, I'll show you a modification. So you're going to go into a full plank and you're going to row right here and just alternate arms. Just like this. Now, if you need to do this on your knees, you would just do this on your knees. If you don't have a weight, you can still do the motion and pull your arms up here. Just like that. You can even, if you want, tap your opposite shoulder. If you feel like you need something to do with your arms, that's a possibility. That is going to be day nine, plank rows. Single arm plank is similar to the single leg plank. You're just going into a plank position, reaching your arm forward, reaching your arm forward. So again, you decide. Maybe you want to hold this for a certain amount of time, 30 seconds, and then switch. Or maybe you just want to keep walking it. It's up to you. That's day 10, single arm plank. Day 11, side plank reach throughs. So this, also I call this thread the needle, that kind of thing. So you're in a side plank here. Your arm is up. You reach underneath and through the other arm, where your armpit is here. And then you twist back up. Sometimes I call this a plank twist. Sometimes they call this the reach through or the thread the needle. I wanted to be just more specific. So when you look at the calendar, you're like, oh, okay, the reach through. Ah, oh, yeah, the old side plank reach through. So you're just doing it like that. And you would do it. So when you do the side plank ones, you would have to do them for a minute each side or 30 seconds each side, something like that. Okay, the 11 side plank reach throughs. Day 12, reverse plank with leg lifts. So the reverse plank... And you'll get to a day where you're just doing the reverse plank, too. I don't know why I didn't put that one first. But you're here, and you're lifting your legs up and down. I think I felt like some, at some point you needed a break or something. Now, this might be harder to hold for some of you than the regular plank because of the position we're in. So just keep your belly up, your, your belly in, your butt up. Now, you can do this on your elbows, too, if it's too much. You can go here. I don't know that it's going to be pretty hard to lift your legs from here, though. So you would just hold this position. Again, any day that you feel like, okay, I cannot do that plank, go to the basic forearm plank. You know, try to practice that. That's, that's the idea. You know, for some of you, the basic forearm plank is going to be challenging enough that you want to do it every day. For some of you, you've been doing that for years and you need a challenge. So this is for you. All right, so the bird dog planks. So the basic bird dog plank, or the basic bird dog, I should say, is this. Opposite arm, opposite leg. So if this is where you are, this is what you're going to do, okay? But if you can do the bird dog plank, you're going to do it one of two ways. You're either going to stay up here and go here, right? Or, and then you'd come down and then you'd switch. So maybe you'd do 30 seconds each side. Or you can always do it here too, if you can. So I would love to see it in the forearm position. Um, it's a little more challenging for your core. Uh, but you do whatever you need to do. That's day 13, bird dog plank. Day 14, plank jacks. So plank jacks, you're in your forearm plank, and you're jumping in and out. You can always go to your full arm here, too, if you need to. But I prefer if you stay down here. And if you're having trouble with jumping, but you can tap out, then go back to the tap outs. <clears throat> okay, day 15, the decline plank. So this is where you're going to put your feet on something. And this is, again... If you're not ready for this, you just go back to the basic forearm plank. Put your feet on something, and you're going to plank. So I'm just going to grab my ball because it's right here. You can put your feet on the couch, on the chair, on anything that's elevated. right? So I'm going to go here. 
and then I'm just going to be here. So now I'm at a decline, okay? And if you choose a really high chair or something like that, it might be more challenging, but I'm going to be on a decline. So my legs are higher, should be higher than my body. My ball isn't very tall, so it's kind of hard to see, but you want your legs higher than your body if you can. That's so that you're on a decline. Day 16, crouching tiger planks. So I always call these panther planks too. If you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you might know what these are. So you get in this forearm, um, excuse me, this four, um, this on all fours, excuse me, position. And you're gonna tuck your toes under right here. And you're gonna shift your weight forward and back. You're gonna circle your body weight around, whatever you can. You're just in this crouch position for a minute. Now, can you go to your forearms and do it? You can, you can do that too. It's up to you, okay? Uh, day 17, side plank crunches. Okay, so this is what this looks like. You're in this side plank here and you bring your knee in and you're crunching. Now, how do you modify? You go to your knee and you do that. Okay, and from the other side to the back, it looks like this. Okay, or this. And that is 17, day 17, the side plank crunch. Day 18, donkey kick planks. That is here. You bend one knee and you're pressing that leg up. So for this, I really recommend doing half on one side and then switching because it's kind of, I mean, you can do it like that, alternating, but it's more challenging if you're holding it and you're doing half and half. So you're just working your glutes while you're hanging out in your plank. Again, always be aware of your form. That's day 18. Donkey kick planks. Day 19, walking plank. So, um, a walking plank. Oh, so I have walking planks and then I have lateral walking planks. So I don't want to confuse you. Um, and then I have commando planks. So these three planks are, um, so the walking plank, okay. So the walking plank, what you're going to do is you're going to be here and you're going to be going forward and back. I didn't call it a crawling plank because I, you're not crawling on your elbows. I don't want to confuse you, but you can go down here and walk forward. So I didn't know what to call this, what I should call it, an army plank, a crawling plank, or a walking plank, or what. So I just called it a walking plank, but that's what you can do if you want to be on your forearms. Now the lateral walking plank, day, day 20, is when you go side to side. So you go, you cross your hands over, and you walk to the side. You cross your hands over and you walk to the side here. That one you are on your all, on your full arm plank. You're not in an all four plank because I want you to cross your hands, cross your hands. And this I feel, I feel them in my sides. I really do. So moving laterally, I'm working my transverse abdominals in my sides, which is great. So the walking plank is forward and back on day 19. The lateral walking plank is side to side. On day 19, the walking plank you can army crawl if you prefer. 21, reverse plank. That's where we just hold this right here. And you lift up nice and high. Okay, abs are in tight. Now, if you were like, oh, well, I really did well with those kicks, or I didn't do all those kicks, I want to try them again, add the kicks back in. That's fine. And you can also drop and lift if you want. Just, you know, think of your own when you're in that position. Day 22, Chaturanga Planks. So these are when, these are hard, and you're just going to do the best you can. And if you want to go to your knees, that's understandable. These are when you, planks when you come down and you hold a position right above the floor. You hold your Chaturanga position. So what I suggest is almost like do slow push-ups. So you come up, and then you come down, and you hold as long as you can. And then you come back up. And then you hold, I mean, you can probably hold on to that. I'm just trying to give you an example. And so then you would come down and you would hold here and then up. Now you could go to your knees, that's fine, and push back up too. Or you can go to your basic forearm plank, that's fine. Day 23, side plank with leg lifts. So it's a little different than your side plank crunch. You're here, right? And you're gonna go here and lift your leg up and down. Almost like you're making a little Side snow angel or a star, like a star here. And that's your side plank leg lifts. Or you can go back to the regular side plank, whatever you need to do. Day 24, plank hops. That's when you're going to the sides. 
And it's tricky because you want to stay low, okay? You don't want to come up and bring your butt up in the air. Now, if you're having trouble with that one, you would just tap out. Okay? Day 25, plank toe touches. Okay, a little different than the toe taps. What you want to try and do is actually touch your toe. So you want to bring it to the side. So when, every time you come back to center, readjust, get your butt down, then go to the side. Okay? Now, again, if that's too difficult, you could go basic forearm plank or you could go to toe taps, something that's challenging. A commando plank sometimes can be called a walking plank. It's not, though. So the compan I'm like, it's that. But this is what, it's, what it is. It's up, up, down, down. So you're in your plank here, and you push up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Now, if that's too much for you, you stay in your forearm plank, you come to your knees and try it. That might be, you know, some something that you can do on day 26, the commando plank right here. You just, and I alternate which arm I push up with and come down with. Okay. Now, plank hikes um, are meant to be done with your feet on something. It can be, it's similar to the dolphin plank where you're pulling your belly in, um, but you want to really uh, elevate your legs. Now on the ball, it's pretty easy because the ball rolls. When you're on a piece of stationary equipment, like a chair or something, you will just push your hips up much like the dolphin, or push your, yeah, push your hips up from your belly, much like the dolphin plank. So if I'm gonna do it on a ball, let me try and go from the side here, so you can see better. Okay, so I'm here and then I lift up here. See how I'm going up into a pike position? My feet went from being, my toes being on the ball here, so my toes are on the ball, my, the fronts of my toes, and then now I tuck my toes under and now the balls of my feet are on the ball. So I go plank, pike, plank, pike, and I, this is my pike. So you can, I mean, the idea is to keep going from here to here like the dolphin plank, but you can always just hold this too. But I would suggest going back and forth. Now, if you're on a stationary piece of equipment, your feet should be up and then you're pushing up with your hip or your, your belly and then you're coming back down. But you're gonna push more back with your hips because you'll be in the air. Try it, see how you like it. Or just do the stationary or basic plank. Plank in out jumps. So this is when you're on your forearms or you can go to your hands if you need to. And you jump in and out, in and out. You can go up here. If you need to get more space, that's fine. Um, remember, the, the, the lower the ground you can be, the more challenging it is for your core. So anytime you can be in your forearm plank, do it. Stability ball planks. This is where if you don't have a ball, then you, would, you could easily put your hands on a, your arms on the couch or something so that you're at an angle. But the point of the stability ball plank is the fact that there's the lack of stability. So you can just go back to a forearm plank if you want. So if you do have a stability ball, I wanted to give you a plank. So you can start with your ball against the wall if you need to, or your feet against the wall if you need to. But the idea is to, to plank with your chest off the ball. You see my chest is not on the ball, and I'm just planking. Now to make it more difficult, you would go side to side, you would make circles. Circles are really challenging. I love the circles. Um, you can go forward, back, like I said, side to side. You just keep moving your ball. So it's not me, like I can be still and hold the ball, but the idea is the more instability, the more challenging it is. So the more I can move the ball, the more I feel my core actually engaging. And then day 30, the last day, you go back to holding your plank as long as you possibly can. So just let yourself, you know, get in front of a clock, watch the second hand timer tick by, and time yourself and see how long you can hold that, that plank that you've been doing all, all uh, month. And every plank you do will make you stronger and stronger and stronger because your arms are getting stronger, your core is getting stronger. So I challenge you this month to do a plank a day every day, be it the plank that I suggest you or a different plank, and I wish you a very happy Planksgiving. Thanks for joining me. Remember, no gym, no excuses. And I'll see you next time.